good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time of day you're watching this. It is Monday, it is another weekly reading vlog, and it is Monday the 12th of April 2021, which in England is the day the shops reopen, which means that Waterstones in my town that is three minute walk from my flat is open right now. My plan is basically after work, I finish at 4.30, I'm gonna walk down and I'm gonna walk past and I'm gonna see how busy it is and I'm going to judge if I feel safe going in because I need to buy something in town anyway today and I would have been going regardless because what I need to buy is from Wilco, hopefully, if they have it, and I would have gone anyway. So now the fact that the shops are all open, I'm slightly nervous about how busy it is, but I'm gonna see because I would absolutely love to be able to go into Waterstones. I have a wish list that is the length of my body, the <laughs> weird thing to say, that I am desperate to buy from. So I really, I can't wait. Honestly, I have had a bit of a stressful mental health time over the past couple of days. And the fact that I can go into a shop, a bookshop, is bringing me so much excitement and joy right now that I just really want it to actually be able to happen. So fingers crossed. I feel safe enough, but I think the important thing is that everyone takes things at their own pace at the moment and does what works for them. So that's hopefully my plan. Also, a couple of weeks vlogs back, I talked about asking, well, I asked you guys whether you cared how many books I read in a weekly reading vlog, because it had always been my thought that the more books I read, the more interesting the vlog was. And I suppose that is going to add more variety to the vlog, but it was putting me under a pressure I didn't realise I was putting myself under. And I have... I've always read, I have always read, I've always adored reading, I've always had a book on the go. And more recently, I seem to be reading a lot more. And there almost seems to be a pressure that comes with that, but it's like an unspoken pressure of so many books being thrown at me, so many hyped books, so many books that are just on my shelves I want to read. And there's so much there that I always just feel like I have to keep reading, keep reading to get through it all, and also to make more interesting content, because the more I read, the more content I can make around those books. But for me, that was causing quite a heavy weight on my shoulders and was stopping me picking up certain books that I thought would take me longer to read. So I've basically scrapped that mentality. Here's the mentality. We're gonna throw it over there, because I asked you guys in a vlog, and every single one of you said you don't care how many books I read, or if I even finish a book at all. And I didn't really expect that answer. I thought that you would prefer the vlogs where I read more books. And honestly, oh my God, the relief since you have said that has made me feel so much happier with what I feel like I have to read in that there isn't anything I have to read. I've spoken about this in last week's weekly reading vlog and I've spoken about it on Instagram as well, but I really want to talk about less hyped book as, books as well as hyped books. I'm not going to say that I'm going to completely denounce all hyped books because there are quite a few behind me that are like popular books that a lot of people will have heard of, but I also want to talk about the books that are not unknown and not unheard of at all, but just there are certain books that you see that you might know but you just never really see about. There are certain books that you might not know at all and you just don't see about. And I just want to make sure I'm integrating both into my channel and not just giving you guys all of the hyped books constantly because I find the content I prefer is when I see a book that I've never even heard of that sounds right up my street and that's really exciting. And like one of the books I adore that I barely see anywhere that I talk about a lot is The Unlikely Escape of a Rye Heap by H.G. Parry. I got that sent by a publishers, I think. I'd never heard of the author. I think this was her debut book and she now has another book out. Never seen it online. I haven't seen it online really much since. I know I talk about it a fair decent amount, but that is one of my favorite books now. <laughs> And I'm so pleased for that. So what other favourite books are there waiting to be untapped within me that I haven't discovered yet because they're not hyped? So that's going to be happening. Also, had a revelation. Basically, I've been really... I don't know what it is with the hand gestures at the moment. I've been really, really just stressed over the weekend. I feel like I've been on 99% loading for 100% being a panic attack. I ended up turning my phone off all day yesterday. On Sunday, I was back home. I wasn't going back home, but... I just felt like I needed to because otherwise I would have sat on my phone. I seem to be just falling into social media at the moment. I've actually just set restrictions on my phone so I don't have that option to fall. I mean, I think I still can bypass the settings, but I've tried. But I've become really obsessed with numbers. So many different types of numbers. I've become obsessed with closing the rings on my Apple Watch. You close your exercise, you move and your standpoints for the day. And I've done that every day since New Year's. And yesterday, 
I just didn't. I decided I wasn't going to. I'd done 25 minutes of exercise and I needed an extra five to close the rings and it was 10 o'clock at night. And I would have done yoga normally and I just thought, do you know what, sod it. I've done a really good walk today. It's just that I was walking with, well, yesterday, I was walking with people that were slower so I wasn't able to get the speed up. But I've still done a really good walk and I've done the exercise and I don't need to punish myself. So I've broken the chain there of having to close that. The numbers thing also with how many books I'm reading to hit a good read, Goodreads goal to read a certain amount of pages. I'm all for setting myself a reading challenge for a week because I know that's fun, but I seem to be so obsessed with the amount of books I'm reading and stuff and actually I just need to stop that because I didn't think about that over the last week and ended up reading Kindred, which I absolutely loved. And it was a short book, but I read it over a longer period of time because I was just really absorbed in just reading it and not feeling like I had to just get onto the next book. So of that ilk as well, as I've said, I'm gonna be changing it up anyway. But also I think it can just be so easy to grab onto numbers in life when you have a look at your viewers, your subscriber counts, your followers on social media. And I'm not saying that I'm gonna forget all those things, but my God, it's easy to become obsessed with it. And at the end of the day, I'm posting content that I love and the numbers, whilst yes, are reflective of the fact that I can see something from it and I'm not just posting it there and ignoring it because like I want to see that people are liking what I'm posting. And obviously the more people that like on something, the more people that watch something, it does make me happy because I spent ages creating that content. But I know that posting the more unknown books on Instagram, those photos aren't gonna perform as well as the known books. I just know they're not. And I need to drop that pretense in my head that that even matters because ultimately I want to spread the books that don't get as much hype. I want to talk about so many different books and just involve as much as I can into my content and just forget about those numbers a little bit and not be so obsessed. I think it becomes scary when I am doing this because I love it, but I'm also doing this because I get an income from it. Like that's not a reason for me doing it. It's something that's come off the back of creating all of this, which I'm incredibly, incredibly thankful for. And ultimately I do do it because I absolutely adore it, but I can't ignore the fact that I've been able to move out as a result of that income. And that therefore plays a part of my brain because I need to kind of keep that going so I can continue to afford to live in this flat and be able to pay my bills, buy my food, pay for petrol, and also be able to invest into creating the content as well. So there are a lot of pressures from numbers and I need to stop. I need to stop counting all the numbers. I need to be sensibly counting the numbers. Like obviously when it does come down to financial things, yes, I need to have an understanding of engagements and audience because that is what brands look for. But I don't want numbers to control my brain quite as much as they are. And I also don't want my phone controlling my brain. Yes, this is a very long <laughs> preachy intro where I haven't actually shown you what books I'm reading yet, but I feel like this is really important to me because I've just got so caught up in the world of social media recently. And I think this weekend it just suddenly was like, nope, because living alone in lockdown, I love living alone, but it isn't the most fun when you can't see anybody other than going for a walk if the weather's okay. And the bubble that I thank, I'm so thankful to have is still an hour's drive away. It's not the most simple thing, every day is the same. And I need to get out of my own head sometimes. And my phone and my addiction to my phone, and my addiction to counting all these different numbers isn't helping me. And I need to step back from that and focus on what I really enjoy because ultimately I am here creating content because I love it. I'm here creating content because I want to show you guys the amazing books I'm reading and show you what's happening in my day to day. But, and the final point of that is I also think that I need to know when to stop with that kind of thing. And I share a lot with you guys. I share a lot of my vlogs, on my Instagram, on my Twitter. Generally, most aspects of my life are covered. I am private where I know I need to be, but I'm also very happy discussing things and being open, such as making a menstrual cup video, which is fine. Like I love doing stuff like that because that is the kind of content I love to talk about. But I am starting to notice that every single aspect of what I do is in some form of my content displayed. And yes, that's my own thing that I've created for myself, but I think I need to work out where to stop that and where to draw the line as well. And I don't know what that's gonna be, but I just wanna make you guys aware, basically, that I am, I'm fine, but I think I need to establish some kind of barrier for myself because otherwise I'm gonna wear myself down. And also I'm gonna become so conscious that every single thing I'm doing, I'm somehow putting it in any form of content. And actually that's probably not very healthy for my brain either. So my kind of solution at the moment to that is the weekly vlogs might become longer, fewer updates that aren't necessarily every day. 
as opposed to shorter, more regular updates daily. And I know I've kind of missed out days occasionally in weekly vlogs, but I might just try and give myself that time to not have to be documenting my life for that day. Cause I love weekly vlogging. I love doing these. These are my favorite videos to make. This is why I started the YouTube stuff. So there's no way I'm going anywhere. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere on any platform. This is just kind of me addressing that there is a lot going on in my brain and no one's taught me how to do this. I'm doing this myself because I love it. And yes, I get an income, but ultimately this is something I do off my own back for content for you guys and for me because I love it. So I'm one person, I'm a human and I need to remember that. <laughs> and I need to not get so caught up in having to present a certain amount of content, a certain amount of books read and just focus on giving you guys what I love, showing you what I love and also reminding myself that not every single aspect of my life has to be put on my socials or my YouTube. <laughs> 11 minutes of me talking and I don't even know what I'm going to edit out of this. So without further ado, the books I am reading at the moment. This is kind of going to be a themed reading vlog in that this is going to be the reading vlog. I am reading A Little Life. I started this on Thursday or Friday, I can't remember, and I haven't read much of it. I'll tell you why in a minute, but I am here. Re oh my god, it's so big. Reading it on Kindle because it's dauntingly large and the chapters are long but I basically just finished the sample on Kindle and had to purchase it last night. And that was that was all the sample. So it was a fairly long sample, page 74. I'm enjoying it so far. I'm aware this is gonna break me. I don't know what it involves, but I know it's gonna break me. So um, I don't really know what, what to say about this yet, other than if you also want to read this book, apparently it will break you, but I don't know why. And I don't want to know why, because I want to be surprised. I don't want to know what the breaking will consist of. So I am reading this book. Help me. <laughs> but yesterday, the reason I didn't read much of that, if any, yesterday. So I turned my phone off yesterday and I just sat on the sofa with my mum and it was the best afternoon. I had my phone off from about 10.30 until 6.30. Oh, it felt freeing. And my mum, we were talking about because basically, oh, so, so many backstories. My stepdad and I watched a Louis Theroux documentary about America's worst, most hated family or something like that. It was filmed in like 2008. And it was about this family who had formed their own church and basically were really, really homophobic. And they were completely hating America for supporting LGBTQIA plus rights. And it was an hour long documentary and it was looking at their approach to religion and everything from their day-to-day -day life to their worship and it was just my stepdad and I were watching it it was like it was totally fascinating and honestly like it angered me so much but the next day we all had massive conversations about religion and about how like how their thoughts had come to light and anyway this started my mum talking to Ava about the idea that women were the worshipped ones and the goddesses many, many, many years ago, and then Christianity kind of switched it around. This then inspired my mum telling Ava about all these stories, well, not stories, like actual moments in history that happened before Christianity kind of really came in to take shape. And all these women that were in power and goddesses and like women owned the land and men were like under the women and the marriage vows were like beautifully done and like about women being uplifted by men and supported. And it was just like total different thing, a totally different part of history that I just hadn't really learnt about. It was 25,000 years ago, up until, I suppose, 2,000 years ago. And yet it's this huge chunk of time that I just didn't really know much about and how much the women played a part in it. Anyway, getting there. My final thing to say <laughs> is she then told me I should look at this book. This is The Women's History of the World. And this basically talks about exactly what she was saying and it kind of goes chronologically up. I've read three chapters of this and I'm on page 62. So I didn't read much. Like, oh, actually, you know what? I just said I'm not doing a numbers game. I read that much. It's a nonfiction. That for me was like, I was really absorbed and obsessed. I'm now on a chapter called The Rise of the Phallus, excellent chapter name. And whoa, this is so interesting. Like if you are interested in learning about the different side of history that isn't necessarily front and center all the time when you're learning about it. I would so recommend this book. It's fascinating. It really is. I, I'm ashamed to say there's some of these things I just didn't know about and how women feature throughout history. 
and how important, like I knew how important we were, but basically men didn't realize that they were like part of how women got pregnant. So women were like idolized because they thought that getting pregnant was this magical, amazing thing, which it is, but they didn't realize that the men had something to do with it. And then as they started to realize, that's when they were like, well, hang on a sec, we're making you pregnant. You're just kind of carrying it. And then it all changed. But honestly, this is so interesting. This is an older book, but I've had a look and you can still get it online. But I think it's about 10 pounds as opposed to the 4.99 price that my mum originally bought it for. But it's also got beautiful yellowed pages that you get with an older book, which just makes me very happy. So yeah, I would really, really recommend this if you are interested. It's written in a really enjoyable way and is also quite funny at times too. I just am really liking it. For example, men's penises have evolved in the same way a giraffe's neck has to be able to reach what it needs to get to to survive, aka to procreate, basically. And I love that, like that whole section talking about how men have evolved to be able to reach women is just glorious. So definitely check this out, but my camera's flashing at me because I've run out of time. So this was a really long intro, but I hope you enjoy this vlog and hopefully my content is gonna continue to be something that makes everyone happy and not stress me out too much. She's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's lining up to see her. She's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's lining up to see her. There must be something bad if features. You'll find her beauty goes much deeper. Once you get to meet her, you see her. Hello, it is after work on Monday, it's the evening, it's past six o'clock, and I have books that didn't come in the mail, they came from a bookshop. I said I was gonna try and go to Waterstones and if it was busy, I was just gonna walk on by and thankfully it was not busy. There was only about two or three people in there when I went in. It's not a massive Waterstones, but it's a pretty decent size, I would say. And I picked up some books. So I picked up five books. I'm so excited. Did go a little bit overboard, but one can never have too many books. So I kind of went in with a couple that I wanted to pick up and if they didn't have them, that was fine. And if they did, I would pick them up. So I got two of the ones I wanted to pick up and I ordered one, but I'm not gonna tell you what I ordered because that is gonna keep you coming back to the video. I, I mean, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I'll either reveal the one I ordered later on in this vlog if it arrives or next week, I suppose. I don't know how long it's gonna take, but the two that I picked up in store that were kind of on my wish list, maybe. The first one was Octavia E. Butler's Parable of the Sour. This is um, from the same author of Kindred, which is a book I read last week and really loved. I looked up a couple of her other books and this was one that I really wanted to read next. Also, I love the cover. All of her covers are totally different, like none of them really match, but I absolutely love this one. And this, oh, I, uh, my short summaries are awful, aren't they guys? Do you want me to summarize them for you? You can't respond to me. Hang on. <laughs> okay. I don't know the setting of this one because the Kindred, well, Kindred was set in the 1970s and then back to the 1800s because there was time travel in it. This one was in the sci-fi section, so. But a quick attempt of the summary of the blurb. America is in chaos and there's a young woman who I assume is our main lead who has an extraordinary power to feel the pain of others as her own. She records everything she sees in her journal. Then one night, everything alters beyond recognition and she must make her voice heard for the sake of the ones that she loves. Her visions start becoming reality. Her dreams of a better way to live gain the power to change humanity for, for, forever. Why words? All you touch, you change. All you change changes you. Okay. Sounds so good, so good. And the second one that I picked up that was kind of one of the ones I wanted to pick up was Blonde Roots by Bernadine Evaristo. I love the cover of this one. All of Bernadine Evaristo's books have this beautiful matching kind of bold illustrations on the front cover, but they're all different colors. I couldn't see this one. I saw all her other ones and I was like, oh no, they don't have it. And it was blending in with the book next to it. So I didn't quite spot it. And then I saw it and I was like, yes. So my attempt of a summary for this one is made a lot easier because the top line of the blurb kind of gives you a good idea. But the top line is, imagine if the transatlantic slave trade was reversed. Imagine Africans the masters and Europeans their slaves. That's what this book is. Um, I think we again follow a young woman. Yes, young Doris. Now you meet young, now meet young Doris. It literally says that. Um, who's living in an English cottage. She is kidnapped with only, her only purpose in life being to please her mistress. 
and yeah, we basically have a complete switch around there. She dreams of escape and returning home to the England, to, to the England, to England, and those she loves. I'm very excited for both of these ones. They're also really similar length. Like all the books I've picked are very similar length. Um, so those ones are going right up to the top of my TBR. Then the books that I didn't intend to buy, one I've never ever heard of and I have no idea, but why not? This is the Deacon House Murders. It's apparently a cult mystery. It's a classic cult mystery from Japan. So this is translated fiction. This is by Yukito Ayatsuji. So again, about the same length. I don't know how I've managed this. This apparently is kind of like what it literally says on the back, it's inspired by Agatha Christie's and then there were none. So there's an island that people are like isolated on and then start dying and they're all part of this murder club apparently. <laughs> and the K University's mystery murder club trip to an island, uh, members end up dead and they're basically being picked off one by one which is the premise of and then there were none. I don't know why I picked this up, but I'm really fancying some mystery at the moment, and this can work towards my translated fiction master list, which is definitely still a thing. I just, you know, it's taking me a while to bulk out because I really want to have it good. So yeah, completely random edition, but I saw it on the shelf. I thought, yeah, I'm gonna check that out. So that's in the pile. The final two are by the same author. It is Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen and Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I have read Northanger Abbey but I don't have a physical copy of it so I wanted to own a physical one because I've got Emma in this same kind of print so I wanted to get one that matched and I like it a lot. It's a really good gothic novel, it's not too long if you wanted to start somewhere short with Jane Austen novels and I really enjoyed it but it follows Catherine Morland, is that her name? Yes! Catherine Morland who basically gets kind of invested in this family that have this huge house and it's all like surrounding the gothicness of that house and the adventure she's on as she tries to just have a very unique experience for her summer. <laughs> I think it's her summer. I've forgotten the actual time period, but basically she makes friends with the family and they invite her out to this creepy house. Except it takes a long time to get to the house. Like this mostly is just her around Bath. Bath? Is it in Bath? I want to say it's set in Bath. I may be making that up. I read it last year or the year before. I'm pretty sure maybe the year before, but anyway. That was good, I enjoyed that. And then Pride and Prejudice, which I've never read. And I've never really wanted to read until recently. And I wanted to get a copy of this. And I remember looking before lockdown and they only had the kind of Penguin Classic black bottom with the picture on the front and I didn't really like that copy. So I waited and had this one now. And also these ones are super cheap compared to normal book prices, 6 99 and 5 99 It's like they actually price it on the size of the book as well, which is funny. And this is the story that pretty much everyone bar me knows because I've always avoided it because I wanted to read it at some point. I knew, I didn't really, it's one of those books, I think I said this in last week's vlog as well, it's like a book that I haven't really wanted to read but I want to want to read it. So now I actually want to read it, but I know very little about this other than the whole Mr. Darcy thing. But I've never watched any adaptations, I don't know much at all. I have deliberately kept myself like that because I knew one day, one day I would want to read it and I didn't want having watched it to stop me there. So pride and prejudice everyone, they match, yay. That's my book haul. Five books didn't come in the mail because they came from bookshops. <laughs> so exciting. I also came home to two books, which was very unexpected and very exciting. These were super kindly sent to me by Emma, who knows that I had a little bit of a eh, time over the weekend and my mental health wasn't great and she sent me two books which is really nice you can find emma on instagram over at the emma edit so thank you so much emma she has bought me two books off my wish list so we have got the secret life of bees by sue monkid i have never read a sue monkid book but i asked on instagram if you guys would recommend this and a lot of people said yes apparently she's a really good writer i have watched the film of this one many 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 years ago so i can't really remember what it's about so a quick blurb summary, Lily has grown up believing she accidentally killed her mother when she was four years old. I don't remember that at all. Now she's older, she yearns for forgiveness and a mother's love, living on a peach farm in South Car Carolina with her harsh and unforgiving father. She has only one friend, Rosaline, a black servant. When racial tension explodes one summer afternoon and Rosaline is arrested and beaten, Lily cho chooses to flee with her. Fugitives from justice, the pair follow a trail left by the woman who died 10 years before. Finding sanctuary in the home of, the th of three beekeeping sisters, Lily starts on a journey as much about her understanding 
the world as about the mystery surrounding her mother. I didn't really feel like I could summarise that without just reading the blurb. I can't remember this at all but that sounds really good so I am really excited to read this one. Thank you so much Emma and I love that cover as well with the little bee at the bottom. Emma also bought me Elsewhere Home by Leila Abuela. I'm really sorry if I pronounced that one wrong but this one I found on a recommendations list of books by Muslim authors and I added it immediately to my wish list because I thought it sounded really good. Here's my attempt at summarising pretty much just reading the blurb. <laughs> a young woman's encounter with a former classmate elicits painful reminders of her former life in Khartoum. A wealthy Sudanese student in Aberdeen begins an unlikely friendship with a Scottish man. A woman experiences an evolving relationship to her favourite writer, whose portrait of their shared culture both reflects and conflicts with her own sense of identity. From the dusty sun-baked streets of Khartoum to the university halls and cramped apartments of Aberdeen and London, Elsewhere Home explores the subtlety and restraint, the profound feelings of yearning, loss and alienation that comes from leaving one's loved one. Love one, oh God, I can't read tonight. Comes with leaving one's homeland in pursuit of a different life. This sounds really good. I'm very excited to read it. I love the simplicity of that cover. This is also exactly the same size as all the other books that I seem to have bought. This fits really well into me trying to read books that are not just the books that I'm seeing absolutely everywhere and just trying to read something a little bit different than what I would normally pick up. I'm really just trying to push myself to not just have to read fantasy, for example. In fact, none of these, well, I think that, hang on, that might have some fantasy elements, but pretty much none of them, other than this one, are fantasy. Look at me. I'm learning to read other things as well. I'm still gonna be reading a lot of fantasy, but other things too. This is very exciting. Thank you so much, Emma. This is super kind of you. And thank you to Waterstones for the other ones, because, well, not that they gave me the books, but like, you know, thanks for being open. I'm so excited to go into shops, like, so nice. So yeah, thank you to Waterstones for being open, basically, because <laughs> that made me very happy. So yeah, five books I bought. Two books was very kindly gifted. Now I'm gonna go eat some spaghetti bolognese with some garlic bread and watch some form of film or read some form of book. Good morning, it's Tuesday. And I have a box. <laughs> this just arrived very early, like literally nine o'clock that arrived. And I opened it up because I was kind of thinking, what are you? I had a vague idea of what it could be. And there's some books inside. So what this is, is a package sent by Bloomsbury very kindly, thank you Bloomsbury, because they are running the Bloomsbury Presents event on Thursday night that I'm attending, and that goes through all the upcoming children and YA books for spring and summer of this year. And in this box, maybe some of those books. So <laughs> I'm very excited to see what's inside. I don't know, I just saw the corner of a book and thought, I need to unbox this on camera, so here we are. The book that I saw is an arc, I think. Yes, it's an arc of The Poison Heart by Kaylin Bayron. I interviewed Kaylin Bayron on the tandem event that I helped host last month or the month before the celebration of YA. And she was so lovely to talk to. She's also written Cinderella is Dead, which I really enjoyed, which is a Cinderella retelling. Is this one a Snow White retelling? I have that in my head. It kind of, The Poison Heart, The Poison Apple thing that kind of gives me Snow White vibes. I'm super excited to have a copy of this one. I was actually looking at this one online the other day because Cinderella is Dead was a really cool take on Cinderella story because it kind of spun around what you think you know. So I think Kaylin and Bayron is definitely an author I want to read more of, so I'm very excited to have this one. Then I've also got The Lightning Catcher by Claire Wes or Wees. This one I haven't actually heard of, so let's have a look at the blurb. Alfie has noticed a few things since his family moved to the folding to Folding Ford. One, he really misses his life in the city. Two, he and his sister don't exactly fit here. But most interestingly, three, the weather is bonkers. Okay, so it literally is lightning. I was wondering if it would be like Zeus kind of lightning. So he's in the center of the perfect storm, apparently. Interesting, I think this one is a middle grade by the cover and the font size, I always go by the font size as to what age things are, I don't know why. Ooh. Okay. This is an arc for Defy the Night by Bridget Kemmerer, who is the author of The Curse of Dark. At oh, I always merge these titles together. A Curse So Dark and Lonely. There's so many different ways those words can fit together. It's a curse so dark and lonely, a heart so fierce and broken, and a vow so bold and deadly, and I just merge them all. So this is her latest fantasy. When does this one come out? September. This is exciting. The back says a spark of rebellion is all it takes to defy the night. The blockbuster start to a brand new fantasy series by New York Times bestseller Bridget Kemmerer. I'm very excited about that. Ooh, 
okay, all right. I haven't looked too much into this one yet because normally when books are too far away for it to be painful that I want them, I just kind of try not to want them too badly. So I'm gonna have a proper look into this one, but the front intrigue is me because it says, do you have what it takes to defy the night? <gasps> okay, this is very exciting, very exciting indeed. Okay, then we have got, what's the title? Something I Said by Ben Bailey Smith. On the front it says, I mean, if you don't laugh at life, how the actual heck do you live through it? Very true, we have to laugh at life sometimes. This looks like it's a comedy book about a 13 year old. Unforgettably funny, big hearted story about family, friendship and how far one boy will go to get a laugh. He looks like he may be doing comedy shows or something because there's a dropped mic on the floor. But again, I think this one is a middle grade. Oh, there's like multimedia in here. Oh, I've lost it. I just opened it to a page with like text messages and stuff. It's gone, but that looks really interesting too. And sparkling blood orange turmeric with Kain Zing. Okay, there's a can of drink and popcorn with a very terrifying cat person. I don't like animals as people that just put popcorn <laughs> and a tote bag because of course we can never have too many tote bags. Stories can start revolutions. They can change the whole world. What does it say on the back? Go on an adventure with Catherine Rundle. There is Instagram and Twitter if you guys want to check out any of these books as well over on Bloomsbury Children's on Instagram or Kids Bloomsbury on Twitter. A piece of art, Medusa, Jessie Burton illustrated by Olivia Lomanek Gill. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see that, but it's constellation, constellations. I, I just framed that really badly, didn't I? But that's so pretty. Oh wow, what a great box. Excellent start to Tuesday. Okay, that's very exciting. I can't wait to attend the event on Thursday night. Awesome. Do you remember that time that I told you guys earlier in this week that I wasn't gonna put pressure on myself to vlog every day this week or every day of any weekly reading vlog? Well, I'm not putting pressure on myself, but it's Wednesday and this is the third day in a row that I am still vlogging within this weekly reading vlog. But that is because this is a little life reading vlog and I wanna update you on a little life because I've made a little bit of progress, really not much, like they're really not talking much at all but I wanted to quickly give you my thoughts. We are focusing a lot on Jude. He is kind of the leading character at the moment. I don't know if he continues to be. I think he does maybe, but we are getting a real picture of his life and we are getting slowly fed more information about him. And I enjoy the way that the author is slowly eking out this information and the way that she subtly goes about different time zones. I'm not gonna lie, at times I'm a little lost as to which time zone I'm in because the chapters are long in this book. Like the chapter I'm currently reading, it says I'm in for two and a half hours of the Kindle um, estimated time. So that's a long chapter. <laughs> but um, the, the because the chapters are so long, I'm not able to stop at the end of them in each reading session. So I kind of lose where I am when I go back in again, which is making it a little bit stilted. I wish there was some kind of like explanation of where we were in time because sometimes we're back in time a little bit but it's not clear immediately and I have to kind of figure that out so I get a little bit lost there but generally I'm enjoying the way that we're seeing the story build up and I think there's a lot of emotion building for Jude and a lot of feelings there for how he has kind of gone through life and how he is now and how he is excelling and the people that he's met along the way and the relationships that he's had with those people and I just care about him and I don't think that's a good thing <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not but it, it probably isn't because everyone gets upset about this book so I'm enjoying it a lot it's very daunting, definitely, and I think there's probably a good chance in the middle I'll pick up a graphic no graphic, a graphic novel, a graphic novel, or something along the way, and just kind of break it up a little bit. But because it's on my Kindle, it's quite easy to just bring about with me. And when I go home at the weekend to get my eyebrows done, yes, I've been self-maintaining my eyebrows for so long, and I can't wait for someone else to do it. Anyway, when I go back at the weekend to get my eyebrows done, because I'm going back tomorrow night, because I've also got to get a patch test for my hair, because apparently COVID can change the way you react to hair dye, so I have to get another one. Anyway, I will just be able to bring my Kindle with me. So that's exciting. But I also, I want some books. Hang on, where can I put you? Okay, I got some books. Some came in the mail, some did not. Let's do the ones that came in the mail. There is someone making noises outside. I've not filmed at all today. I sit down to film and then make noises. They've been quiet all day. Anyway, we're gonna push through that because I can't do anything about it. But the two that came in the mail, the post, I, the mail post, the, the through my door, 
but mail, 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 mail books came in the mail. Hey, I got these two. So first up, I have got Ian McEwan's Nutshell, which is about a baby's perspective of a murder. A woman's betrayed her husband and she's come up with a plan that I think involves maybe killing him. There's a witness to the plot who is a nine month resident of her womb. I have never read a book like this. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the plot. That sounds bizarre, but also interesting. And also it's the same length as all the other books that I hauled for you whenever that was. So like yesterday, the day before. But yeah, so that, that looks good. And then we've also got Dangerous Women by Hope Adams. This cover is beautiful. I don't know if you can tell, but around here, is actual like little shiny gold bits. Why won't you focus? There we go. Shiny gold bits. And it's so pretty. But I came across this when I was searching for feminist fiction and empowering fiction. And this one came up and I thought it looked really good. And I also, again, thought it looked like something out of my comfort zone. Basically what I've done over this week is just acquired so many books that I wouldn't normally pick up. So I just really have an array of books to just kind of push myself towards when I fancy them. Oh, the end pages are so pretty. So this is kind of murder mystery-esque, but also historical. It's set in the 1800s. It starts in London as there's a lot of women, 180 of them, who are put on a ship because they are convicted of petty crimes. And they're being taken to Australia. On the ship, one of the women is killed and they realize there is a murderer on the loose. Now this is actually based on a real life voyage of a convicted ship. It's thrilling and deeply moving mystery narrated by a group of women as unforgettable as the events they describe. I love the sound of that so much and the cover is stunning. So I'm very excited. I want to read that like right now. See, this is a slight dangerous thing of buying loads of new books when the book I am reading is like a million pages long because I want to read so many things at once. So many things. So I did that. And then I also went back to Waterstones yesterday Basically, I actually wanted to go to Fat Face and I did go to Fat Face and I bought myself some really nice pajamas and a really nice like hoodie thing that's like a pajama hoodie but not a pajama hoodie. It's just really smooth and comfortable. And I got some new socks because all my socks have holes in. They have sunflowers and bees and stuff. Hang on. I'm literally filming a video about books I've acquired and I just got a book through in the post. Okay, I will tell you what that was in a sec. I got some socks. <laughs> That was the exciting thing. And some earrings and stuff. So yeah, anyway. So I got off a couple of bits and I thought, oh, I'll just go to Waterstones just quickly because it'd be rude not to. And it's got like 10 minutes before it shuts. So um, I just nipped in. Just a quick trip. <laughs> okay. So I said I wanted to read Little Women and I added a really lovely hardback to my wish list. But I also saw this one and now I want this one as well. So I, I bought it. <laughs> this is the same cover as the other classics I hauled from Jane Austen earlier in the vlog. So this is Little Women by Louise May Alcott and it is so pretty and I got it because it matched but also I do want to read this. The pages are insanely thin. That's terrifying but I do want to read this at some point. I can't say it's going to be necessarily very soon but I definitely want to get to it. Then I also got The Strawberry Thief by Joanne Harris. I saw this on the table when I was buying my books on Monday and didn't pick it up and then I went back and picked it up. <laughs> Because the reviews convince me, they use words like intrigue, charm, 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 intrigue, charm, magical, stunning. It sounds like the pot of chocolat or chocolate, um, chocolat, that sounds more romantic, which is a film in which a woman owns a chocolate shop. It, it sounds very much like this in that there's a woman running a chocolate shop and a florist dies and leaves a parcel to her with a written confession that completely throws the village into disarray. And then a new shop appears that changes things, but the new shop is described as mysterious. And I don't know if there's magic there, but there's definitely murder, apparently. I've never read any books by this author before, but this one really intrigued me. And I thought if I had seen enough to pick it up twice, then I had to buy it. So I got that. And finally, I got A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. Now this was one I have seen a lot of times and I've walked past and I've thought, no, I don't fancy it, it's not my kind of thing. But with my newfound approach of trying to broaden my reading and also I want to read more historical because 
I think it just helps me find little bits of history that I'm interested in as well. I know this one's a retelling, but I looked at it and I thought that looks fierce, it looks feminist and it looks bold and I want to read it. So this is also the book of the year for TLS. I don't know who they are, but if it's a book of the year, I'm here for it. But the, um, the fact that it's described as fiercely feminist by the Guardian on the back, yes. It is told from an all-female perspective and I absolutely love that and it, it says on the bottom of it Natalie Haynes puts the women and girls, women, girls and goddesses at the centre of this story. So I think this is after the fall of Troy and what happens then. I'm very excited now, I just, I, oh so many good books. I said I also received another book whilst I was filming this which was a surprise, this is one of my, off my wish list and I'm very, very thankful to have received it. This is Punching the Air, and this is by E.B. Zobi and Yusef Salam, and this one was actually recommended to me by one of my patrons, and that is also who bought this for me. So Sky sent me a little note that says, just a little thank you for creating your amazing content, making a wonderful community through your Patreon. Hope you find the, hope you enjoy this book as much as I did from Sky. Thank you so much, Sky. I'm very excited to read this. I'm gonna read you guys the blurb because I, struggle desperately to summarise books, as we've seen from all these other books that I have attempted to summarise. Amal Shahid is all, has always been an artist and a poet, but even in his diverse art school, because of a bias system, he's seen as destructive and unmotivated. Then one fateful night, an altercation in a gentrifying neighbourhood escalates into tragedy. Boys just being boys turns out to be true, only when those boys are white. The story that I think will be my life starts today. Suddenly, at just 16 years old, Amal is convicted of a crime he didn't commit and sent to prison. Despair and rage almost sink him until he turns to the refuge of his work, of his words, his art. This never should have been his story, but can he change it? This, at the bottom it says, a moving and deeply profound story about how one boy is able to maintain his humanity and fight for truth in a system designed to strip him of both. This sounds absolutely amazing. It's credited on the front as being nothing short of a masterwork of humanity. But I'm really really excited to read this one as well. I've got quite a collection here. I I really am set for a very long time with books and I feel immensely lucky. I just I love having so many books around me to choose from because it just excites me and I absolutely love having a wide breadth to pick from because that's how my mood reading brain works the best. So thank you so much Sky, and I will catch up with you guys a little bit later. it's Thursday. I really just came on to show you that I had pancakes for breakfast that were delicious and also show you my outfit. You can't, you can't really see it can you? But you know, I've got funky trousers eh. and I've got a new necklace on from, I think it's called like Sour Cherry or something, but I kind of like the outfit. It was loose and I enjoyed it. But anyway, um, I also have something to show you because I got another book in the mail. Uh, somebody bought me the lovely edition of Little Women that I had been going on about on my YouTube for like two weeks since I added it to my wish list. It's so pretty but also so cute! Look at the little faces with the little mouths! So cute, so cute! But this did not come with a note so I don't know who sent it. I've put on Twitter asking but I don't know where it came from so let me know if this was you because I want to say a massive thank you. It's so cute, but I've also now got a little classics shelf. There's my little classic shelf. It could do with a couple more bulking out, but we've got, hang on, I'll take you for a tour. Okay, so we have got Little Women here, the um, one that matches these ones. Emma, Pride and Preg, Northanger Abbey, Christmas Carol, The Sign of Four, The Hounds of Baskerville, Rebecca, Peter Pan, Lolita, which, I was kind of umming and ahhing about putting in here because it's a very different tone to these other ones but I kind of want to read this one at some point to have read it because I know it's a real debatable piece of literature and Little Women. There we go, my little classic shelf. Did I forget to wrap up the vlog? Yeah. Did I just remember as I was about to get in the shower? Yeah. It's Saturday evening. I've had a really nice day back at home. I played The Sims this morning with Ava, a little bit addicted. I got my eyebrows done, <laughs> yes, and I went for a walk with my fellow bookish friend Holly, which was really nice, we got our dogs, so that was good, it's been a good day, had pizza for dinner, played a bit of Trivial Pursuit, love a bit of Trivial Pursuit, and now I'm just gonna chill, 
get ready for bed and sit downstairs for the evening and watch something on TV. I haven't read a great deal of A Little Life, I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of going slower for me, but that's fine because I know that it is a heavier book, but what I think I might do is read something else at the same time as it next week just to kind of break it up. And I think I'm doing Patreon sprints in the next week or the week that you're watching this. So I don't necessarily want to be reading A Little Life for that because I'm reading it on Kindle and I like to have the sound on with my Patreon sprints. So like you could get the page turning sounds and things. You don't get that with the Kindle. So I might pick something else up or maybe read a graphic novel because I have bingo love to read. I don't know, anything could happen, but I am aware this has been quite a long <laughs> vlog, especially after I started it by saying I wasn't gonna go in with any expectations, but I feel like that actually made me have more interesting things to say because I was thinking about it more and updating you when I wanted to, not because I felt I had to. So hopefully you guys liked it. I feel like this week I've just kind of been figuring some stuff out about how I wanna move forward with things and how I need to best look after my brain and my mental health and what I wanna do for the future of my content and how I wanna to continue to grow it and keep it really exciting. So hopefully this has been a good vlog. There's been lots of trips to the bookshops, lots of book hauls. It's been really fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Comment anything you like down below. What's the first book you've bought since the bookshop's been back open? Have you been? What's the first book you're hoping to buy? Will you plan or will you just go in and see what you fancy? You can also subscribe to see more of my face on your feed. And as well, if you wanted to see anything more from me or if you just generally wanted to support in any way, there's a Patreon page down below where I've got various different tiers with various different fun things such as live readings, a really lovely little Discord family that I'm just loving at the moment so much and also podcasts behind the scenes stuff it's a fun time it's all linked down below but thank you guys so much for watching i will be continuing little life into next week where i'm sure it will break me a bit more but yeah this has just been a kind of chill week and i haven't really had as much time for reading because i've been doing other stuff but hopefully you guys have enjoyed the vlog nonetheless so thank you so much for watching keep smiling and stay positive